he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, since I have not known any man? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Therefore, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who is called Mary. For with God, nothing will be impossible. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be to me according to your word.
decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Corinthians was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked with angels to
your, it'll affect your relationships. Worry can really affect your social life. If you worry a lot and you're super anxious, you're actually not a lot of fun to be around. <laughs> and you, it, just, you, it just affects and it subtracts from your social life. If you're worried, it can affect you in so many different ways. It subtracts. Recently, we did a special service for our youth, and they came and helped us in all our services. And we interviewed different youth. And I asked the youth, I said, what's your biggest challenge in high school today? Different than when I went to school, they, they said, our biggest challenge is mental illness. Worry, depression, anxiety. Some of our friends have committed suicide. Some have self-harmed, trying to hurt themselves on the outside to nullify the pain on the inside. And it's just this worrying that's going on. There's a war going on inside of us. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. There is enough trouble. I've come for you. And I don't want you worrying and living that kind of a troubled life. So we see that worry comes in and causes a war inside of our heart. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about the A. What could A represent in a troubled heart? A represents anger. Now, anger by itself is not wrong. I mean, there's times it's good to be angry. God, after all, said to be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, get over it before bedtime. There's something about anger that's actually an instinct we have to help us when we feel harm or injury coming to us. But anger left unchecked, boy, it does a number on the inside of us. One of the things that anger does is it causes bitterness to grow into our heart. I know, I think if you look around at that door, you'll find worry, you'll find anger. Hearts in trouble. That's not the way God wanted us to be. So W stands for worry. A stands for anger. What would R stand for? It could be a lot of things, but tonight I said R stands for regrets. Do you have any regrets in life? Do you ever say, man, I shouldn't have done that. I can't believe I said that. I like to get my words back. If I could only have said that differently. I wouldn't have done that. Why did I hit that person? Or why did I get angry there? Why, why did I do that? Regret sometimes the things that we did. Sometimes it's things we should have done. We should have done, but we didn't. If you live in Vancouver, you might have regrets. I should have bought a house back then. <laughs> That's a regret. I live with that one. I say to my wife a hundred times, oh, you know what I should have bought back then? I tell him that to one of my friends, and he said, Dave, Regret is a recipe for dis despair, and he's right. If you live with regrets, you just live in despair. All of a sudden, that cold heart turns into a warm heart. But you have to invite him in. He wants to be there. He wants to come. Then there's peace and purpose that's extended towards you, but you have to receive the Messiah. If you say, no thanks, God, I got this. Don't need the Messiah. I think I can figure it out. I got regrets. I'm dealing with my anger. I got worries, but I got this. God will say, all right. I won't intrude. But it's extended towards you. But if you'll embrace me, if you'll draw me, if I can come into your life, I will take a cold heart and make it a warm heart. The Old Testament says that God would take a stony heart, a cold heart, and make it a heart of flesh, a warm heart. There, and it chews on the inside of your life. But the Bible says that when we worship Him, He literally inhabits or takes up residence in worship. That M factor, the Messiah comes and lives with us. There's a story of this pilot years ago in the early days of aviation on a solo flight around the world. Gets in his plane and he takes off. He's flown 2,000 miles and he hears a gnawing in the plane. And he goes, there's a rat in my plane. And he begins to worry. What am I going to do? I've got a rat in the plane. I'm flying by myself. He's chewing on the cables. Who knows what all? And I'm going to crash out here. And so he begins to worry. He says, what can I do about this? And he begins to, he begins to think, what should I do? 
And then he thinks, you know what? A rat is a rodent. They live under the ground or on, on the surface, but they're never meant to live in high heights. So he got that plane, took it to 15,000 feet, then he took it to 20,000 feet. He took that plane as high as it could go. And all of a sudden there was no more gnawing. And he couldn't hear any rat. So he landed the plane, and when they opened up the plane, they found the dead rat in the plane. Why? Because the rat couldn't live at those heights. And neither can your worries live when you begin to worship God. It will die in the presence of God. The Messiah move, removes worries, removes anxieties. He said, cast all your cares upon me. I care for you. I'll be there to help you. So we'll change the W from worry to worship. What should we do with anger? Let's replace anger with appreciation. Appreciating God for all that he's done. And then we're going to appreciate one another. So powerful appreciation. Fred Rogers, in one of his books, he talks about the value of appreciating your neighbor. He says something very interesting. He said, you know what? Appreciation is actually a sacred thing. It's a holy thing. He says, because God appreciates every one of us. He appreciates you. He loves you. He takes time for you. He cares about you. He says, actually, when we appreciate other people in our lives, what we're doing is something very sacred and very holy. Not to overcome. I think it's important. Let's change the R from regret. Let's change it to reconcile. God made it possible that we could be reconciled with Him. Do you know He, he forgave us? He said, out of the fact that I've forgiven you, you'll be able to forgive others. And that's what reconciliation is. Reconciliation in our world is we're going to reconcile things. We need it in our homes. Maybe we need it in our workplace. Maybe you need it in your, we, we need it in our nation. We need reconciliation. But you know what? Reconciliation doesn't happen if there's a war going on on the inside of us. But if we honor God, if we appreciate one another, how can I reconcile with somebody if I don't appreciate them? How can I reconcile with somebody if I don't forgive them? <laughs> so if we want to have a change in our homes, in our nation, and not be at war, it all starts in our heart. This, all because of the Messiah. He took a cold heart and makes it a warm heart. Paul, in the Bible, was somebody who could have lived with a lot of regrets. He was the guy, if you remember, that persecuted the early church, threw people into prison, was there when the first martyr was stoned. He oversaw it. It's a different kind of stone. Not a Vancouver stone. It was a throwing rock stone. You just have to receive it. It's been sent. It's faster than Amazon. It's been sent. But Amazon's fast. It's faster than that. But you still have to sign for it. You have to receive it. Don't let it sit at your post office. Don't let it sit on the concierge desk. Receive the gift. Open it up tonight. It's the best thing you'll ever have in your life. And it's here for you right now. How we do that? You just pray. God, that's it. That's the exchange. Exchange is just words. It's just me saying, God, I accept it. I'm tired of the worry, the anxiety, I'm tired of the anger, I'm tired of the regrets, and sometimes even the rage of my life. I want your help. I want this peace. Not just now, but for eternity. He's offering it to you. So, let's do something special tonight. It might be the greatest Christmas gift you ever get. It will be. Just take a moment and pray with us. Would you bow your heads with me? And I want you to just silently pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer to bring the end, the Messiah, into your heart. Simply pray out loud, quiet under your breath, just pray this with me tonight. Dear Jesus, tonight I open my heart. I'm tired of the war. I'm tired of the trouble. I need your help. I ask you, Messiah, Son of God, come into my heart. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your peace. 
receive your purpose. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I don't understand it all. But tonight, I receive your love. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for that.